Today we are going to be checking out how to make 2D sprites in Game Builder Garage. As always, if you guys have any games that you've made that you want to share with us for us to play, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and we'll check them out. This sprite is linked to a person character, so you can even wall jump off walls and do everything that you can with the normal player character. So let's dive right in. Now here you can see everything that we are going to have to put together in order to make this work. You can see my beautiful sprite here from Kart Fighter. Uh, Kart Fighter is an NES bootleg game. Alright, so here we have our standing animation and then our three walk cycle animations. Now having three makes it look very smooth. Over here I just have some miscellaneous sprites. Um, this link right here is the scale of a person. Now if you just grab the person object and want to link a sprite directly to it, you're going to need to make a sprite that is 26 pixels by 64 pixels in size. So we can even go ahead here and just quickly link this to a person and see how it fits. So if we go ahead here and grab our person, we can make it the same size and then you can see that that fits perfectly within that object. So if we go ahead here, we can link them together and hit play. And that is one for one fit to the person. Each one of those pixels on that link is a two by two. If we link it to our chunky sprite though, we can see that it wraps around the person, which is the problem I was running into. It was really difficult to make sprites at really any scale that actually worked with the person node. So in order to link any size sprite to an object, we can use a box. All right, so let's go ahead here and start by just showing you how to make a texture. So you go down to objects and select texture. Now the only setting that you actually have to change within this is to turn off all of these and select X center. This will make sure that it's going to be on the right, looking and facing the right way uh, once we get it into the game on the person. There we can see the scribbles I just threw on there. All right, let's delete that and get started here. So first off, we're going to grab our object. We're going to grab just a simple object and grab a box. Now this box will be the size of our sprite, basically. Uh, it will also kind of work as a hitbox for the sprite that will be on top of the player. So as you can see, that fits perfectly within. Now, what I found out through testing is you're going to want to make sure that that object it hits either the top and the bottom of that texture or the left and the right side of that texture or else it will not link properly to it. It'll be shifted over and you won't be able to fix that. Now you're going to want to make sure you keep this movable, but I would turn off the rest of the things for now. Destructive is one that you can toggle on, but it will also work on your player. It just depends how big you want your hitbox to be. So here we have the three frames of our walk animation. So we have 0, 1, and 2 with how this is set up. We're going to go ahead and create a timer here. So grab a constant out of the input. We're going to go in and edit this and pull up the calculator and put in 0.1 and hit OK. And that will set a, a constant for 0.1. Go into our middle and then flags because we need a counter. Go ahead and link that to the first dot on our counter. And that will start counting up. Go ahead and put these settings on. So leave the starting value how it is. Turn it on to bounce and then drag it down to 2. All right, and that's all we need to change in there. Next up, we're going to need to go grab a digitizer. Now this digitizer, we want to leave it 2, so we can just leave it how it is and link it up to our counter. Now this is our timer, which is going to be cycle between our three walk animations. Each one of these animation sprites is going to get a constant starting at zero. They're going to increase by one each time. So we get a constant of zero. Let's go ahead and pull up a comparison. So we want to equals comparison out of the middle at the bottom there. Link it up to input two. It doesn't matter which one, but we're just going to do two consistently across. Link that up to the digitizer. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab an and statement node. And then we're going 
to take the output of our comparison and link it up to our AND. And then we're going to take the output of our AND and put it to our first visible sprite. Okay, and now we can just copy and paste across for each of these sprites here. So we're going to get another constant out and put it up there for our second walk animation. And we can just copy and paste these here. And we will link them up the exact same way. So go ahead and do your constant input 2 on the equals and the output of that to there. And then the digitizer to the comparison. And the exact same thing will go for the third sprite. Now we're going to want to change our constant to 2 here because our things are 0, 1, and 2. And go ahead and grab your comparison as well as your AND. I forgot to put the output over here, so we'll just link that up right now. Output, and just the exact same way as before. It doesn't matter which way you link your equals comparison to. We'll do it with the second one just to be consistent, but it'll look at them the exact same way. All right, and now we have all of this set up. So now we need to link up something to our AND statement to make it true. So we're going to be using our left stick. We're going to go down to input here. And we will grab stick movement, left, and left and right. Now we can go ahead and we can link this to every single AND statement for the sprites. Go ahead and grab your person out of the object section again. And make sure it's the exact same size as that object, or the exact same height, I should say. Uh, a very important thing to change is the connection point of your object. Go ahead and make sure those are on the center. That way they will appear in the center of your sprite. If you do not do that, the box will appear on top of the head floating in the air. Go ahead and take your output of your stick and link it up to the left and right. All right, and now we're going to need to grab some logic and a knot. So this makes it so when you are not moving the stick, it's gonna play your standing idle animation. That's very important. If you were doing Link, a uh, sprite-like Link that is 26 by 64 pixels, you can just take your person node and link it up directly to all of your sprites right now, and you would be done. However, since we're using a very wide sprite, we're gonna actually link our person to our object and then link our object up to all our sprites. So that way they appear on a box. So it's just like this. Uh, make sure you turn your person invisible here. That way they don't interfere with your sprite. And the next very important thing, go up to the top to your coordinate system. And we're gonna rotate our coordinate system upward and make sure that that box is stretched as long as your sprite. You can go ahead and rotate our coordinate system back and then hit play. And what you should now see is your sprite locked to your 2D grid and your nice clean walk cycle. The only thing that we cannot change here is how your sprite starts off, or at least I haven't found a way to do that. Once you move though, your sprite locks to the grid great and it's seamless anyway, but it's just depending on which side it starts in the actual person. Thank you guys for watching this quick tutorial. I hope this helps you out on your journey to making a 2D game in Game Builder Garage. I plan on making more tutorials uh, like this on enemies and stage layouts and maybe even items, all sorts of different things I plan on doing here. And if you want to watch us play some of your guys' games, we have done one video and we're in the process of making some more of those. We're having a lot of fun playing what you guys have made. And this game is just an absolute blast. I'm loving the community so far. Keep up the great work and keep learning.